Hello, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. I am having an exhausting day because I flew 10 hours straight to Osaka. That's where I'm at, Osaka, Japan. We landed at about 6.45. And now, by the time you check in and do um, customs and everything, get your currency, get your SIM card, it is like nine something. And we have to wake up super early at five in the morning to go to Universal. So we'll see how that goes, but I am starving. We didn't have dinner, so we're going to go look for dinner. I'm here with Mr. Aiden, and it's his first time, besides Mexico, at an international area. So let's check this place out. I have never been to Japan. I've only stopped at the Kansai International Airport and Narita twice, just for a layover, but never actually stepped out of here. So we're gonna try to get some yakiniku and then try all the other stuff on another day. We're here only for four days. There's that famous crab place. Uh, we got reservations, but we have to go to another town. They have multiple sites here and they were all booked. But that's pretty cool. Hey, there's banh mi and a Vietnamese flag. I like that. All right, we made it. We actually found it. It was downstairs next door. And here's some of the stuff. We've got skirt steak, raw beef, tenderloin, some weird stuff like tongue and tripe. Uh, we got to go to bed soon, so we're going to just get some, probably some skirt steak or some kind of ribeye or steak or whatever and grill it up and eat it we've also got like a lot of vegetables and stuff right here cabbage onions garlic mushrooms corn oh they also have kimchi and of course the beer and soju highballs and i'm sure some sake for starters, we have the Asahi Super Dry, of course. And I'm not sure what this is, but it's like a little appetizer she brought out. It looks like shiitake mushrooms or something. And then we have the sauces and the grill and some beef fat, I guess, to uh, oil up the grill. The beef fat's over here. And your dipping sauce. This Yakiniku, I'll put, um, try to put the addresses of places we go to. If you're interested in coming here, is one of the only ones open for a popular eating street. We're in um, Dontonbori, which is the popular walking street with the riverfront. Our hotel's right there. We'll give you some information on that later on as well, because uh, people seem to be interested in the accommodations and the price. But um, we'll put the address there. This is one of the only 24-hour establishments. Sorry, got interrupted. He served us our plate, but um, all of the places here surprisingly close at 9 p.m. So it's quite early for a big city anyway. So let's get to the food. So I'm not sure which one's which because it's labeled in Japanese, but we ordered some ribeye and also some Kobe beef because when you're here, you might as well try it out. The portions are quite small, but um, we're not too hungry because we ate on the plane, but I just wanted to eat something since we didn't have dinner before we head to bed just to get uh, over this jet lag. This seems to be the Kobe beef though because it's super fatty. I don't even know. They don't tell you what to do so are you supposed to put this fat on here? I have no clue. Alright, let's taste this appetizer. Whatever it is. There we go. No, it's not mushrooms, it's actual uh, beef. And some of it looks like awful, or the parts you don't like, I'm not sure. But it tastes good, it's very beefy. A little hint of sweetness. Mm. If you're Korean, it kind of tastes like a less soy type jangjurim. That dish, it's a Korean skirt steak uh, beef that's kind of simmered till it's tender. Really good. And then here, rice does not come with your meal, so you gotta order it, but it's only um, 300 yen, so not too bad. 
All right, so this is our vegetable, kind of like a medley. Got some shiitake mushrooms. Well, I thought it was supposed to have corn too, but I guess um, mistranslation. Maybe it's each, but it was together. I thought it was corn, shiitake, and garlic, but only gave us mushrooms, but that's fine. They're really meaty. Look at that. All right, let's taste this um, beef. <laughs> wow. It just melts in your mouth. It's like so fatty. Wow, it's good. Definitely has to be the Kobe beef. That was amazing. Now I'm confused. I'm like, was this the ribeye that I ordered? I have no clue because that did not look like ribeye, but we didn't get our ribeye yet. I, it's kind of interesting being in a country where there's a language barrier, but I'm having fun so far. There's no knives, so hopefully I can bite through it, but this is the sauce. Mm. It's like sweet, sesame, but kind of has a, a little spice to it, but not too spicy. There's this shiitake mushroom. <laughs> so fresh and meaty. I've never really had a fresh shiitake mushrooms and these are super fresh. And they remind me of um, portobellum mushrooms, like a really baby one, a tiny one. Not as strong of a flavor though as a portobello. I've only had mostly dried shiitake mushrooms that are reconstituted. So these fresh ones are really delicious, really good. All right, so he did say, uh, I asked, the guy said that the first one was Kobe beef and this is ribeye. But damn, look at that fat cotton. I would think this is like Kobe beef or Wagyu. <laughs> All right, so I got the ribeye. It did come. So that's what it looks like. Dipped it in some sauce. Oh man, that's definitely like butter. I just, your teeth just cut right through it and you can feel that fattiness. Damn, that's good. Wow. I've never tasted beef like that before. Mm -mm -mm. That literally just melts in your mouth. I mean, here. I'm probably being rude with my hands, but it just tears apart. Just, wow. Amazing first dinner, dinner here. But I am totally tired. I have one more bite of beef and we're gonna go head up to our room and go to bed. And we'll see you tomorrow. Before we go to bed, <laughs> right next to our hotel is this, and I find it funny. That's uh, very coincidental. But uh, that was a great meal, so good night again for the second time and see you tomorrow. All right, so it is like 5.40 in the morning and with the jet lag and the weird timing. I don't know, I got used to Vietnam very well, but um, this is a little ahead of Vietnam, a couple of hours. So it is about 10.40 something at home. So it feels like I'm oversleeping because I usually wake up at 3.45 a.m. at home. So I was kind of still in bed awake, naturally, even though I was tired. But we're gonna go, we're up early because we're gonna go to 7-Eleven, which is right next door to our hotel. It's very convenient. There's also a Lawson after that. We went there last night to get some drinks and some snacks, but we're gonna get a quick breakfast. A lot of things I looked up don't open till 9 a.m. here because they start the workday later than in the US. So 7-Eleven is 24 hours, gonna get like maybe a sandwich or something then we're gonna head on to the subway to go to Universal Studios it is uh, recommended you go there an hour before opening because as Japanese people are they're very efficient and they open earlier than the 
uh, the opening time. So we're here in 7-Eleven. It is quite tinier than the 7-Eleven at home, but they have all the good stuff. I mean, even though it's compact, they got everything and it looks so good. And last night they were doing something fried. It smelled like fried chicken and it smelled so good. And uh, it's a little bit early. They even have like prosciutto looking stuff. Soybeans, salads, soba, manteco, some manteco type of pasta. They got some kimchi. Interesting. All right, we're gonna go get some drinks. Hope you can hear me because we're going to Universal and I don't want to carry too many things so I didn't attach my mic to my camera. We're just using the regular mic. But yeah, you can see all the different bochas, the teas, water, they've got coke and uh, not too much of a coke section, just coke, coke plus, kiwi, whatever that means, I think it's a k-pop type of thing, orange juice, and it's made by Asahi too, and some apple fanta I think, I think I'll get the uh, orange juice, I'm not sure if I want it though, I'm a coffee person, uh, maybe, maybe I should just grab it in case, we got like a Calpico type of thing, that creamy yogurt drink, Japanese monsters, Ah, this is what I want. Coffee. Now, that's what we're talking about. Got some Starbucks here. The famous Boss brand. Georgia coffee. All that good stuff. Right. Oh, look, there's noodle. That is interesting. Stir-fry noodles with uh, a hot dog bun and corn in the hot dog bun. I think I'll pass on that. Oh, they got like uh, pancakes with syrup already embedded into it. A Japanese cheesecake. <coughs> so we're in there, our hotel. I'm going to do it now because it's super empty. But here at um, the Grand, the Sotetsu Grand Frisia, we got face wash. Toothbrush and toothpaste, razors, shower caps, free brushes even, these little disposable plastic brushes, Q-tips, cotton balls, hair gel, they say hair wax, coffee, sugar, honey tea, all kind of green tea, matcha tea, and you can take it. And down here, that's where you check in too. It was super fast. There's a whole bunch of self-check-ins with computers. You can scan your passport. There's a vending machine here. And bathrooms on um, floor number two and ten I believe there is uh, laundry facilities here you can grab your own robe and some pants and there's a buffet right here in the morning pretty cool hotel we're on the ninth floor and it is reasonably cheap it was only I think I paid for five days or five nights anyway, and six days because we're going to leave later in the day on Saturday um, for only $270 uh, converted to US dollars because um, for some reason our dollar is worth more right now. So it's a deal, it's right in the center of everything and near Namba Station. So a really good deal. This is our room. It looks like a mess because uh, last night was brutal. But as you all know, Japanese hotels are very tiny. So that's the walkway. We just woke up, so it's a mess. We didn't make our bed. That's the bed. I don't even know how couples fit in there. Um, and here's the leg room. So we could barely fit our backpack there. There's a little seat. The desk is full of crap because there's nowhere to put it. And then I will go to the bathroom. It looks even more worse because there's no shelf space. Um, but I expected that. It is what it is. That's our suitcase. We got some hangers here. Here's a little hot pot. And here is some cups.
made the tea from downstairs, and this is like a little mini fridge. And then the bathroom's really weird. The light is out here. You pull it out, and that's pretty much the bathroom. The shower is super low, so I have to kind of kneel down. And um, there is nowhere to put anything. Like, this is the soap they give you in the shampoo, because there's nowhere to put it here. <coughs> we brought our own little stuff, but there's like absolutely no room. But it's clean. There's a bidet. There's two things of paper. I mean, toilet paper. There's Kleenex on the desk. And then there is a bunch of towels, two towels. No body wash um, or like, you know, those types of little towels to wash your face with or face cloths. Uh, so thank God I brought my own little scrubby. And uh, it's just two hand towels and two regular towels. They will switch out your towels if you put out a sign every day or if you don't want them coming every day you don't have to. If you want your room cleaned as well they have little magnets to put outside your door be before 12 p.m. if you want it cleaned. And there is also a hair dryer here. And if you're wondering and you've never been to Japan, the plugs are the same as the U.S., except they do not have the ground uh, plug. So for the three-pronged ones, they're not going to have that. Uh, but if you have the regular two-pronged American plugs, they work here. So you don't need to buy a converter. And I, I like this place. There's a TV here, a little fan thing that doesn't really work. But I will say, as a person from Hawaii, this room is hot as heck. And maybe I'm used to cold weather, but um, it's so refreshing to go outside because I am sweating in here. You cannot control the AC in here uh, the or the temperature. So you can control the fan, but uh, it doesn't really do anything. It does say on the hotel's website that um, they, they control the temperature. So it is what it is. I turned the fan on last night. It, was, it didn't even really work for me. So... Um, that's the only complaint, but it's cheap and it's clean and the staff's super friendly and all those free amenities downstairs are awesome. So here and it's really windy yeah. and uh, getting here was, uh, eh, we had a little uh, difficulty in, at first on the first train, but otherwise it's pretty simple. It is kind of harder, I will say, for somebody that has been taking the subway everywhere. I've done Korea, which is really huge and I thought that was simple. I think this is the most difficult subway system I've done. I've done Portugal and New York and all that. So the reason being is all of them are privately owned, these subways and trains. They're not public transportation in Japan and they're owned by different companies. So you have to get off one like uh, Nankai, there's Osaka Metro, there's JR train. So you have to take different brand trains to get here. But all in all simple, just two, two different trains. We're here at Universal Studios. It is pretty windy today. It's supposed to be up to 40 mile per hour gusts. What a crappy day to come. But um, at least it's not raining too bad right now. We're here about an hour early and this is how crowded it is. Like I said before, it opens an hour early because they're so efficient. And you have to come an hour early to get Nintendo World Times tickets. You can't just go in there. So if you're late, you might not go in there. We were running a little late, um, but we'll see if we get in there. If not, no big deal. They, I don't know if today was different, but they all say that it opens an hour earlier. We got here an hour earlier, or actually a little bit late, like 10 minutes late, and it didn't open till 7.45, so we waited in line for a while. But if you're hardcore and you want to get in line in the front, um, I guess you could come here early, but it's freezing today. I usually can deal with cold very well, but the wind, it's like 40 mile per hour wind gusts sometimes, and then 20, it's and it starts raining sometimes and it's the wind that really kills you. So we're dying in line, uh, but here it is. We got the first um, time to entry ticket. So that's another thing. If you're really hardcore and you want to get in to the Mario Nintendo World area, you need to come early because if you don't get your time ticket, you're not allowed to go inside and they do it that way because it is just so 
uh, crowded in there that they have to do time tickets. But you can see how crowded it is already. It just opened. People are running to whatever area they want to hurry up and go to. Uh, we're not going to stay all day. We have um, another appointment to go to. A lot of these places in Japan you need to do reservations for. Otherwise, you're probably not getting in. But there's all this cool stuff. I haven't been to Universal Studios um, in the U.S. for a while. I went when I was a kid in California, but um, never went as an adult. So it's nice to see all the new stuff. All right, we have our timed entry ticket and we found it. This is the Super Nintendo World. The only other one in the U.S. is in California. And haven't been there, so it'll be interesting to see this version. Tastes like man. It tastes like root beer and syrup. Root beer and syrup, like a cream soda. Is that, but that's your second time having butter beer, right? Yeah. All right. So we're here. We had butter beer. Um, if you're coming here, you gotta go through the lines. There's two. One on that side. One on that side. Then you go around with your receipt to get the butter beer. All right. You have an option to get hot. So I got hot because it's freezing and really windy. It is like a cream soda, but it's more butterscotch. It's like those butterscotch candies that your yeah. grandma used to give you. Yeah. It's good. And it's nice when it's hot. It's really, um, like, warms you up because it's freezing. Cheers. Okay, we got the Hogwarts meat pie. Let's take a look at it first. It's really uh, crusty and crisp. Okay, let me know what it tastes like. It tastes like bread and meat. Bread and meat? That's pretty much what it is. Is it like curry or not? <laughs> Just meat? Yeah. Alright. So that's what it looks like. It's got the H on there. 700 yen. Alright, gonna taste it. No way, dude. That's good. It's flaky. 
and the inside tastes like beef stew. But with ground beef, mincemeat, instead of the beef stew meat. And it's got the peas and carrots inside. That's actually really good for um, amusement park food anyway. <laughs> All right, so we're at Happy Kitchen, which is a minion place. And we got a hot chocolate and two like minion curry buns, which is pretty much like Manapua. Aiden's gonna try it. Show the inside. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, it's like curry manapua. How is it? Good. Does it taste like a manapua? Kinda. Here's the minion bun. Let's try it out. It's like Japanese chicken curry. I've got chicken pieces inside. It's really cute. It's not too expensive, I guess, for an amusement park. And it's good. The bread does taste like Manapua. This is Demon Slayer Churros. They got strawberry milk and matcha chocolate. That's pretty cool. And here is My Hero Academia Churros. And also the buns. I think that's minced pork bun. And we're gonna get that. I don't know what the difference is. I think it says it's chocolate pistachio. That's the difference from the other one. This is Aiden's favorite anime, so we're gonna try this one instead of the other one. <laughs> All right, so I have the um, churro. It's a pistachio chocolate from My Hero Academia. It's crunchy. Yeah, it does taste like pistachio. That's good. Yeah. Alright, goodbye Universal Studios. We didn't stay the whole day because the weather's not so great and we're freezing. Um, the wind is just whooping to the point where they closed most of the rides, like the roller coaster. So that kind of is a bummer. But if you're looking to visit here and you're on a day where it's actually not so windy, it's not so much the rain, it's the wind. Um, it is much cheaper than the US. It's about a little over $60 when you convert uh, your US dollar to the yen. And that is way cheaper than going to California or Florida. And pretty much they have most of the same rides and the food. I will say the food was exceptional for an amusement park. Usually it's overpriced and doesn't taste so good, but it's a little overpriced here still, but still tasted really good. Everything we had was very delicious. All right, we're at the Pokemon Cafe and we finally got in. There were walk-ins and they denied them. They have some new items. This is the Pokemon Sushi and some Pokemon Confectionery Japanese Sweets. Um, you get like a sticker here for the kids. You order on the app. They have English, Vietnamese, and other languages. And as you can see, it's totally full. And it's got like all these cute little Pokemon things. And all the food is Pokemon related. Um, we got this one. That's the Charmander and Pikachu curry. The Charmander is a chicken cutlet. We already ordered that though, so we don't need that. I got the Snorlax belly lunchtime, I'm sorry, nap time lunch plate, which is a fried rice and teriyaki chicken. And we're probably going to order some drinks. There's some fancy drinks. So yeah, pretty cool. Okay, now that's the Gengar drink. I think it's super cool. And it's a character from Pokemon, if you're not familiar, and it's grape flavored, so let's try it. All right, here it is. It's so cute. It's like a grape smoothie. That thing has grape peels in it and like rounded up fresh grapes. Mm. I don't know what these are, like cookies? They're like grape flavored cookies. The closest thing I can describe it as is the artificial grape flavor of Japanese gum or candy. That's what it tastes like. This is Sprigatito's melon soda float. 
it's melon soda with some ice cream and a cookie. Super cute. Look at that, that's so cute. Ooh, that's good. This one's better than this one, I think. And you can feel the ice cream melt on the bottom, so it kind of tastes like the shave ice with the ice cream on the bottom. I like it. Super sweet and melon-like. Wow. That's cool. Just put it in there and mix. And then use that to mix. Oh, oh, and uh, And then shake. <laughs> ah, and then pour it in there. Thank you. And then this inside? This is chocolate. Inside. Okay, here's my Snorlax meal. I think it's so cute. Here's Snorlax with a bed of fried rice with the shrimp and some fries and teriyaki chicken, broccoli. That's the teriyaki sauce you pour over. And these cute little vegetables with the Z's because he sleeps. There's a chicken. It's all right. It's not bad, but it's weird because it has bell peppers in it. It has that bell pepper taste. Aiden's curry came out, so that's a Charmander chicken cutlet. Looks like some mac salad, some rice formed into a Pikachu with curry. That is so cute. If you have kids or you're a Pokemon fan, definitely have to come here for the experience, but the food is just okay. The drinks, however, and the desserts are really good. So if you're just here for desserts and they also have tea, that's cute. But as far as a meal, the chicken's a little bit salty and it's not very teriyaki-like. And the rice is um, just mediocre. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not like what you would expect to eat in Japan. It's more for the ambiance. This concludes our first full day here in Osaka. Hopefully this video helps you if you have kids on what to do and definitely make reservations at the Pokemon Cafe if your kids are really into it. They have a gift shop and a trading card area on the same floor as well. So join us for three more videos. We'll be here for three more days for more traditional Japanese and street food. Take care, aloha, have a great weekend.